Uh, Barry. Barry, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ronnie, if they let Kiss in the Hall of Fame, does the Kiss Midget Band, do they get into? Look, let me tell you something. I think if there are is a midget band <laughs> that fucking does your music better than you, I don't think you should be able to get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There's not a midget Pink Floyd out there, but no, there should there be. Isn't. Shrink Floyd. <laughs> All my kids bust my balls about Pink Floyd. Why? They think it's the stupidest shit ever. Why? They just think it's pretentious and ridiculous. No, they don't. Yeah. They're into Radiohead, aren't they? Yeah, that, but not as much as you. Um, but they do. They bust my stones about Pink Floyd. There's a direct correlation from Floyd to Radiohead. I'm sorry. I'm telling you right now, my entire family is lined up against me since this fucking... Since, uh... Last night. Well, you can... I've lost my family. You can, can stay over our house, and I'll say this. I'll hey, put, your house looks too rough for me. No. I'll, I see the bruises on you. <laughs> I'll put me and my pregnant wife on the couch. You you can have the bed. It's a, it's a beautiful queen size, Mr. B. When the uh, when the baby's born, can I still keep the master bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that a problem? But really, at that point... And I don't like any crying babies. <laughs> I can't help that. The babies cry, you know, that's the way what it's What was be. Uh, Mr. Mike's name from Saturday Night Live? What was his real name? Michael Donahue? Donahue. Donahue. Oh, Donahue, right? Michael Donahue. Yeah. There was something, I guess he had a stepkid that was crying, and he went in and shot a fucking gun off next to it. <laughs> 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 I don't. I thought it was like a starter pistol, but just shot it off next to a crying baby. <laughs> it was one of my all-time favorite stories. Uh, on Time.com, they've got some... On what? Time.com, the right. website. They've got some moral dilemma questions. One of them involves a crying baby. Okay. All right, all right, here it is. It's wartime. You're hiding in a basement with a group of other people, and the enemy, enemy soldiers are approaching outside. The baby's crying. If you're found out, you're all going to be killed. So the only way to get the baby to stop crying is to smother it to death. So it's not your baby. There's not going to be any penalty for killing the kid. Could you be the one that smothers the child to death to save everybody? Now, is this Time Magazine or MASH.com? <laughs> this is the last episode of MASH. <laughs> it's, it's the Hawkeye dilemma. Uh, no. I, uh, I would think you fight wars to save babies, <laughs> not to kill them. I thought that was the whole point of fighting in a war. What about for you, Earl? I could never do it. I mean, why not just have the, the mother nurse the baby to keep him quiet or her quiet? That's one way to get out of it, but I can never smother a baby. That's I can't crazy. even understand. You come up with the only way I can save us is by killing this baby. <laughs> well, I mean, basically, baby... why don't you say the same thing? Let's suppose you're all in there and you're freezing, right? Right. And so cold and you're out of wood. Do you burn the baby to keep everybody else warm? <laughs> I mean, would that not sound nuts? It's, it would sound How insane. How is that any different than this? So here's the results from di time.com. 56% said they could not smother the baby. 44% said they would. I'm glad they didn't have a pee in my butt option. They would kill point. the baby. <laughs> I, I'm that, just... by the way, ruins every poll. <laughs> it really does. Because even if I take one, I gotta put that in. It's too funny, not to. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jeff. Who, by the way, did Jeff Foundry invent that? Foundry Music, Jeff. And he came up with the phrase, pee in my butt. Yeah, yeah. that was his thing. It was, actually, it was the poll of, this, why doesn't Fez like me or something? Or no, am I a good person? Yeah, and it was you? Yes, you are a good person. No, you're not a good person. Peeing my butt was option number three. But I, I especially that I'm going to have a baby. I don't want to think of <laughs> killing it to save yourself from Nazis. <laughs> no, I, I just fucking feel like what's the point in being in a war right. if you're killing your own babies? Would you? Let's say this. If, would you? You run out of bullets. Would you throw the baby at the Nazis <laughs> to save everyone? No, it, it might doesn't slow even make down. fucking sense. Yeah, at certain points, I think you have to choose death, you know, because... The you, only way I would kill the baby is if I had a hangover, <laughs> and that would be my own personal reasons. All right, here's another one from uh, time.com. Uh, by the way, uh, there uh, is uh, a lot of discrepancy, again, with what you have to say. All right. The way I'm understanding it, Lil and Cam oh. invented it. Hogwash. Lil on Cam invented this. Uh, I don't care what those, the, what your insiders tell you. I, my insiders tell me it was Jeff on that poll. He invented it. Mm. I'm telling you. Maybe Lil on Cam said it, but I'm saying who it was. It was put in the poll form in the message board. Jeff. Oh, well, that's not fucking fair, though. 
Well, I, it I, really I, comes down to who came up with the saying. I I never heard her say that. You know, I never heard Lil on Cam say that before. Uh, Pee in my butt. If you're wrong, do you walk off the show? Never no. return? No. I'll, I'll I didn't you... do this. I don't want to stay at your house, but I do want you to bring them in bed in here so I know you and your wife <laughs> have to stand up when you sleep like horses. All right. I'll, I'll agree to that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you hit me in my bruise with the drumstick seven oh, times. Oh, thanks. Seven times? Seven times. All right, thanks. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I'm right. All right, here's another one from Time.com. You're in a lifeboat with several other people. The boat is overloaded. It's going to capsize, killing everyone on board. They're all going to drown unless you lighten the load by one person. All right, now they have gone from MASH to Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Do they fucking not have anything they haven't seen on Turner Classic or Nick at Night? <laughs> so what, one of the passengers is injured, certain to die soon, but fully alert. He knows exactly what's going on. Could you throw that person overboard knowing that you would save everyone else? Here is, oh, it's our friend Jafta. Does hey. anybody remember Jafta? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Yeah. Uh, PMI Butt is from South Park. That's Butter what? Says. Come on. <laughs> Butter says. That's bullshit. I'm serious. I never heard it on South Park. I watch it all the time. So we're talking about having sex, and they go, what do you got to do? PMI Butt, and Butter said it. The great butter. Yeah, butters. Uh, Jafter, big yeah. ass prize closet to you, my friend. Ah, thank you. And instead of ringing the cowbell, I will be hitting Dave on his bruise <laughs> with a drumstick. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, it's not gonna good. be fun, and I, I don't know why this is even. Oh, then back out of that, please. Yeah, <laughs> mic okay. it. Now, uh, here, bring this mic over here, cause I, I don't want to be too close to this anyhow. Okay. So, uh, he's got a terribly bruised, uh, leg, and I'm going to easily tap here. I'm supposed to do it seven times? You can do it seven times. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. Okay. Is, because this is going to sting a little bit. Okay. I want you to count to three, and I'll do it on three. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, two. Ow! <laughs> Right in the bruise. Oh, oh no! This was a not well thought out plan. Uh, oh! Come on, Bonzo. Six more. <laughs> six more. Shit. At least you know it was coming. <laughs> you did it on two! <laughs> you told me to count to three and you did it on two! No, wait a minute. Yes! Isn't it and a one and a two? No, you said count to three. I said one, two, and then you hit me. I wasn't prepared mentally, physically, anything. All right, so it's not an and a one and a two. <sighs> no. Let's get this straight. Three. Can we just do this? Yeah. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then you can hit me. Gotcha. Not on two this time. You please. got six to go. Okay. One. <gasps> One. What did you say? Oh, oh! I said, <laughs> why are you doing this? You, it's Mr. B. You mm. do it on three. One, two, three. You did it on one that time. All I'm right. not prepared. It hurts like shit. Shit hurts. <laughs> All right, now you got little crosses on you. That's good to you. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, you got to sit down. You got five more. Five coming. more. We'll take a little break. Oh. Now, what's bad is this sets me up like I'm the bad person. Well, you cheated a little bit. You didn't well, do a little. Well, I, I think of it as a competitive advantage. I don't see this cheating. We're not competing. We're not competing in this. <laughs> okay. Now I know. I didn't sound perfect. This isn't what I do for a living, hit people with sticks. I'm, I'm as new at it as you are. Oh. This is new for all of us. If anything, let's try to be understanding. And let's all remember, there's five to go. Five, right. I know. Or well, six. I feel, uh, now I feel like I want to start over. Or six or seven. But, uh, I can't remember the count. It's not... Uh, it, it's really not fucking fair for me to be judged. All right. You cheated. Uh, here's Jeff. Jeff, you're on a fez. Hey, what's up, buddy? Yeah. Uh, actually, pee in my butt, I believe, was first 
stated on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Oh, that uh, sounds that's two more. That was two more. What? I, I, I can't imagine another seven. My butt. Right? <laughs> yeah, that... Pee Wee's Playhouse was a real kid show. Right now, did you ever see the first one they did on HBO? Yep. That was more like a parody of a kid show. Yeah, that was very racy. But uh, I don't know if I'd say racy. <laughs> No, yeah, that that was he was he was trying to get with Miss Yvonne on uh, that and everything like that. So yeah, I I doubt very much. Uh, no, it exactly. was Pee Wee's Playhouse, but no, thank you. All right, so Time Magazine, we find out they've ripped off Mash and Alfred Hitchcock, <laughs> all in one poll, <laughs> which is ridiculous. So here's the percentage of people that said they could sh throw the injured person overboard out of the lifeboat. 58% said they could do it. 58% uh -huh. could kill someone. <laughs> That's why well, I mean, <laughs> that one actually makes more because at least it's done with an adult and sacrificing an adult, not a baby. <laughs> and here, here's one more. Good. Uh, let me guess. If you and your friend Potsy had to stay in <laughs> and we were going to miss the big race, would you sneak out even though you know your dad was going to ground you for life? Uh, this is an out-of-control trolley car headed down a track toward, <laughs> towards five unsuspecting... What year? 1910? <laughs> toward five unsuspecting people. It's going to kill all of them. You can throw a switch diverting it down to a side track but you kill one unsuspecting man who doesn't know it's coming. Baby? No, just a guy. Blind guy? No, nope, adult regular guy. Okay. Could you throw the switch, killing one to save five? Let me ask you this. What would Die Hard do? <laughs> Die Hard would find a way to stop it from anybody dying. That's what the hero <laughs> does. You don't go, well, the only way out of this is to kill a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep trying to find ways. <laughs> And then, if it don't work out, you're like Tommy Dorsey. You go down <laughs> swinging. All right, Earl, could you kill an unsuspecting person to save five other people on a trolley car? Um, I would do it. I would, I would sacrifice the one to save the... the no, course. here's the thing. The one person is black. The five people that live are white. Oh. White Republicans. Oh, I'm going to have to save the brother, then. Seriously. I'm, I'm, being dead, I'm being dead serious. You would kill five Republicans to save one black guy. Yeah, I would absolutely do it. Who just got done raping his sister. Well, he would have his day. Let, let the man have his day in court. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Well, first of all, all black guys get their day in court. <laughs> There's no fucking doubt about that whatsoever. Every one of you motherfuckers are going to get a day in court. And none of you are going to have OJ's people. <laughs> Uh, what about for you, Dave? No, I'm going to just let the trolley go wherever it wants. Yeah. If the people die, the people die. But if the guy dies, but... All right, well, now the, yeah. uh, the new information tells me that your daddy was the first person who put up pee in my butt. Your daddy? Yeah. I... Who lives where her. now? Cambodia? Right, he moved somewhere. He went to live some crazy place. Yeah. He went to the Middle East for how long? And now I think he lives in Cambodia or Thailand or something. I find it hard to believe that your daddy started. I, I'm going to stick with the Jeff, and I'm going to get my five licks, hopefully in a fair way. So licks? Five, you know. Uh, are you ready for one more? Yeah, I can take it. Yeah. Just, can we just concentrate on doing it on three this what, time? What did I do wrong the first time? Oh, my God. The first time I counted to three, I was trying to count to three, and you hit me on two. Right. The second time I was trying to count to three, and you hit me on one. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to count to three. Right. Please, Mr. B, though. And this is in I your, gotcha. in your massive leg bruise. What you don't understand is it hurts more when you don't do it on the three. Gotcha. Okay. So I hit you on three. Last I time I hit you on one. Right. Yeah. So just, I'm going to count to three, and we're going to do it like that. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four. What? <laughs> wait, wait, how do I? Stop, stop, wait, stop, what are you stop, doing? Stop, stop. What are you doing? Now you're not hitting. Where are you going? Now you're now you're not hitting me on three again. All now right, well, because you went so fast, you're up to five. Tell me. 
You're making this so much more fucking worse. Pain-wise, mentally. Yeah. Okay. I'm starting to get a little tortured here. All right, let's do this. Come on, we got a show to do. All right. We're done with this. I we want, can get back to where we want to I want to go there. One, two, three. Wait, when did you four, say... When did you say... What are you doing? Come, let's get... You're moving around. You're torturing me. Come on. You're seriously torturing me. Put your leg up, too. I'm trying. All right, now, so, uh, read it off. Please. One, two, three. Now, when did you want to... What? Where are you going? Stay in. Why stay are in. you doing this? You got to stay put. You stay put. Take your head. Fez. Fez. Come on, what? let's do this. Stand Can you still. hear me when I speak yes, to you? Yes, but I didn't know when you wanted hit. Put it up here. On put, three! Put, put the leg up here. This what? is torturesome, though. All right, now when do I hit oh. you? On what? You hit me on three. Ow! 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 You said three. Ow! Ow! Now I got it on the threes. Ow! Oh, you didn't do it. All right, just you seven to go. Then. All right, we got uh, an audience out there. Make sure that you go out and show them uh, that it's not a gimmick. Show, uh... He's hurting me. They know it's not a gimmick. <laughs> they saw you hit me with the stick. But I want them to see your bruises. Holy shit. Here, folks. It's nice to see you, but... We got Erica and Josh from Philly in the audience, and Jeremy and Heather from Idaho. That were hit <laughs> when I was not prepared. No, oh, so the reason out. why? <laughs> Son of a bitch! Great, now it's audience participation day. <laughs> That's a good bit you're doing. That doesn't by count way, as you one. Got a really bad stain in the back of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's necessary. Yeah. Like this. yeah. Uh, Fezzy, why don't you tell your dog story from the other day? Oh, I'm walking down the sidewalk. And All fucked up. <laughs> well, and I see this big uh, dog. The dog is huge, and it's laid out across the sidewalk, and the guy who's got the dog on the leash is leaning over it, and he's just, he's petting him. But the dog looks like it's unconscious on the sidewalk. So um, in the neighborhood is where Skippy's vet is. So my cat, so I told the guy, I go, there's a really good vet just a few blocks from here. If you need an animal hospital, with that the dog lifts its head, growls, and bites my at my leg. <laughs> what? Bites my leg. Now I find out this story because my chick is walking down the street. She sees Fez, and Fez says, "I just got bit by a dog." <laughs> that was the weirdest thing that I saw her right after I got bit. <laughs> that I had somebody to tell that to. Well, if you're a dog, you're probably going to want to bite fast. What gives you the right to go up to homeless people and tell them that they should take their dog to a hospital? I thought the dog was sick. I thought the dog got hurt. I didn't know if maybe he got hit by a car and he had it up on the sidewalk. Were you trying to pet the dog? No. No, I was just standing next to it. I didn't think the thing was going to move again. I thought it was dead already. <laughs> Sleeping. He doesn't And understand. he goes, the dog's just resting. And with that, I get, uh, he snaps on my leg. <laughs> I love that dog. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I had fat boy sweatpants on, and I couldn't go through the skin. You walk around town with sweatpants on? Well, I had sweatpants. It was like early Saturday morning. I didn't feel like putting on regular pants. Were you going to the gym? No, I wasn't. Oh. Were you in a softball game? <laughs> no. Then this is bad. <laughs> Just you're going, walking around town in sweatpants. Getting bitten by dogs. That's a, uh, that's a fucking, what's his name's joke that used to be with us? Harry. Harry, yeah. Harry T. joke. <laughs> he gave up on pants, Fez did. Just for one morning. Uh, you know, no one has less understanding of animals than Fez. <laughs> First of all, Why he ever adopted a cat? I know. And it's impossible to get bit by a dog in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so now I'm just nervous passing any dog on the sidewalk But did now. you get a, a rabies shot? Because now, not only do you have cat brain, but you might... <laughs> no, I... I I'm sure it's fine because he mostly got sweatpants. It just like kind of pinched my skin and not and didn't break it. That's the worst kind. That's they pinch. That's all it takes is a pinch. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I guess he's well enough to bite. <laughs> that put him in his place. So now you stop being mad at the guy. <laughs> well, yeah. I was just trying to help. I thought the dog was seriously injured.
He's sleeping. And it was a big thing, matted fur. Can I tell you something? It had a harness on the I know tip. where the fucking neighbor, the, where you're at. That dog is there all the time. The guy's using that dog to get money from people. Oh. I had you act like you just came in through the tunnel. <laughs> like, and you might as well be walking down the street with a balloon. Because you're a fucking... <laughs> Just the hayseed. I had never seen the dog gimmick before. What are you always doing in my neighborhood? You don't live there. No, but I like I go to the stores over there. My doctor's <laughs> over there. Why? Why do you live on that island and then you want to be an Upper East Side guy? Well, the island is you know it was convenience when I moved. It was yeah, it was what it I knew. Convenient, no shopping, <laughs> and you can't catch a cab. <laughs> And you have to, and you're uh, surrounded by water. That's convenience. So I'm like, I will never approach another strange dog again. Mm. That thing could have really latched onto me. It was big enough to take my ankle off. You know what kind of dog it was? Nah, it was some long-haired thing. It had really long matted hair. It was all white. Some fucking homeless dog. Some mutt. <laughs> What do you expect the guy to have? <laughs> the, I, I tell you what kind of dog, but uh, we would call it my neighborhood, but Earl's here. Oh, What's boy. another name for it, Earl? What would you call a dog like that was just running around without an owner? <laughs> I can't Look see. like nobody took care of it. We always call it, we, we always just call it a mutt, but I'm not no. going to use the other word. <laughs> what was the other word? It, it runs with, with trigger. That's what you would call it? <laughs> what? You would call it that in your own neighborhood? <laughs> yeah. Why would oh, you yeah, call yeah, it that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You were calling an end dog. Yep. See, I didn't know it was that universal. <laughs> he didn't even put d dog at the end of it. No. <laughs> That's why I was like, what? <laughs> he just called it the N word. <laughs> what? It was Corona. It was the late 70s, early 80s. I'm not saying we were the most refined people in the world. Why don't you ever try to move out then, Earl? Why are you still hanging out in Queens? Well, I love Queens. Not that particular. I mean, Corona was my. I home. remember two years ago you said I will live in Manhattan. He has yeah. the money. He has to have the money. He's never spent a dime. Yeah. He steals tips off the table. Oh, All you sick. need is a fucking cot for this room, and you're. It's better <laughs> than your house. <laughs> Actually, my apartment's about. If you put a wall where, where this back area is, that would probably be about the size of my apartment. That's great for people listening. <laughs> if you put a wall where this black uh, back area is. Do you have a TV set, or are you still listen to an old radio? <laughs> I have a television. <laughs> There's not, like, a TV room in the building? Does the fucking train run two fucking feet from your thing, like Blues Brothers? <laughs> I didn't picture you in the Blues Brothers apartment. <laughs> no, I'm not near the subway. That's my bed, you sleaze. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good fucking callback. That's the only one I know from that movie. <laughs> I love Dan Aykroyd in that film. You did? Yeah. He was your favorite blues brother. <laughs> I loved Bellucci more, yeah. but I loved Aykroyd as well. And then when it was a Rolling Stone, you were always a big Bill Wyman fan. Oh, yeah. he's my favorite stone. <laughs> he's cool. It's kind of like the silent but deadly Rolling Stone. I'm telling you, we're barely getting out of this 07. We're getting bit by dogs. It's awful. Bruises. I got the bruise. Earl got his mental problems. So Fez, you got a you got a Christmas present to make up for me for this other one. Well, I'll get you one. Yeah, you got till what five tonight? Yeah, boy, that's kind of quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can have it tonight. Why don't you just write me a check? I'll do that. Hmm. Make it have a lot of zeros. Make <laughs> make it be so big I go. Oh, you you can't. <laughs> this will ruin you. And I don't even know if that could make up for it. I've never had a fucking... I can't remember the last time I, my chick and I have had an argument. I'm really fucking thrown by it. That's a, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he needs to give you enough money, and then maybe you can, I don't know, take her out to dinner or something. I don't know. I don't even think, though. I don't even think she wants to talk to me again. Great, Fess. We're at that point now. And you're not used to this. Uh, uh, no one's on the dad's side. Uh, Dave, you're going to have to get used to that. <laughs> no, no, I, I think, of, that think of like your own parents. You're never yeah. like, yeah, I'm with dad on this That's phone. true. You know, because you look like a maniac when you're yelling. <laughs> I did not want to fucking go to the show. 
You're tired, too. It's a Sunday night. How many years have I said to you, Fez, don't get me tickets? Uh, every year I've gotten you tickets. Why do you do it? Is it passive-aggressive? No, it's not passive-aggressive at all. I, I'm, I hope you believe me on that. No, I don't. I swear to God, I do not. Because I always thought it was like a bad choice of tickets, not the tickets itself. How many times do I say, I don't want to be fucking booked? I want to go where I want to go, when I want to do it. You know how I feel when anything's fucking lingering in the future. It always annoys me. Hmm. Uh, here's Nate. Nate, you're on Ron Fez. Yeah, I thought Earl never used the N-word. Earl, what about that? Use the end. I was quoting the the name of the uh, of those stray dogs that people in the neighborhood used to give them. I would never. I, I, I don't. I, I I don't think I've ever used the word maliciously at all. I mean, but I, I just hate the word. I just don't like using it. I think you've used it non maliciously. Well, in, in cases where I quote it, it's a quote or Happy Birthday, N word. No, not like that. <laughs> Not at all. Did you ever say that? <laughs> no. <laughs> that never, it's a horrible, horrible word, in my opinion. Worst word ever? I don't know about worst word ever, but for, for, for people of color, for me, in my opinion, for people of color, that's the worst thing you can call a, a black person. Mm. What's the best thing? I don't know. <laughs> Friend. Friend. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> Why is everything black and white with you? Not everything is black and white. I mean, it's... Uh, it's not to me, though. What? You, uh, now, when you were in the, at the Ron and Fez party the other night, did we not have such a... Uh, so many different types of people? Oh, yeah. There was, Everybody's uh, together. We have white people, uh, Latin people. We have Jewish people. We have people uh, from Idaho. Yeah. Idaho. They came in from. Right. Um, one guy was from Minnesota. Showed up. Oh, he's a big fan of Winnie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're good. Oh, yeah. They're good. Winnie. Just makes me laugh yeah. the way they say ONA. They can't say. You can't say the name of the show that you love. <laughs> you can't say ONA. Winnie. Woo wee. So, Earl, you can't worry about things. Yeah, I, and I don't want to worry about things, but it keeps constantly getting thrown back at me for some reason never we never even bring it up here but I'll, I'll give you a perfect case last i don't see color i only see lip size that's the only <laughs> thing with me that's how i'm that's oh, my measure of a man that's the how you categorize things big deal <laughs> big deal <laughs> what <laughs> i only go by nostril circumference <laughs> that's it for me patrick ewing what, what were you saying, Earl? I forgot. Uh, I yesterday was the perfect example. Um, there's a there's a clothing outlet right next, about ten minutes from my apartment, and I needed a new coat. And I and I walk in. The second I walk into the place, and the place is fairly crowded, mm. and I and I walk in, and the uh, one of the sales guys, he he just like he looked at, he looked me up and down, and because I had a uh, a one, I didn't have my regular coat on, and he pounces on me like. Like, like, really, like, if I'm going to steal something, he's like, can I help you with something? Hey, let me show you all that. I mean, just almost immediately, and I'm like, and I've shopped at this place before. But why is that a bad thing? Why could no, I see new, that as service? No, it was a new... I <laughs> see it as service. You were saying he doesn't trust you. And I'm, I'm t The vibe that he gave completely was distrust, because it wasn't my regular guy. It was a new guy. But how do you know that's the vibe? It, you, I, and I don't know if like, it's... Like, I am not crazy about... Can I help you? Can I help you either? I like to look around myself. So I go like this. No, I'm going to fucking look around. No matter what. I, if I know exactly what I want, I still want to acclimate myself to the store mm -hmm. and then come back to him. But I don't take it as harshly as you do, Earl. No, and I said that because I knew exactly what I wanted. And and I said, I said no, thank you. I, I, I pretty much know what I want. And I start to walk, behind, walk back. To, and I knew exactly what I wanted to get. And I turn around. He's right behind me. <laughs> I mean, like, literally less than two feet behind me. And he's like, you know, we could show you some coats. And, uh, and I'm like, and I, I, said, uh, no, I said, that's really okay. I know exactly what I want. And he was just on me. So what and, did he, he thought you were a coat stealer? 
I get. I mean, it just to give up this vibe, I'm like, I'm, and I and I almost snapped, and I was, like, you know what? I'm not gonna do it. I just can't do it. But because- I mean, he did not call you a name. All he said is, "Can I help you?" Yes, I understand that part of it, but I'm, I'm but I'm telling you right now, I think you're a little defensive. I'm paranoid I, now, Letitia. Am I wrong about that, or am I uh, is Earl right? I'm I'm willing to be open minded about it. I mean, I've been like followed and stuff before but i think in earl's case he's being just defensive it doesn't sound now i always hear from uh black friends that they hate hearing that ping ping thing goes off <laughs> in department stores but i hear it all the time too and i don't think that i'm being followed <laughs> i don't even know what that sound means but black people swear that means black person entered the store <laughs> ping ping and I hear that, and I go, but I hear that, I don't even think it has shit to do with me. And I hear it every time I'm in a store. I think maybe, uh, Earl, you're a little paranoid. Well, I could be wrong, I don't know. I don't know what it's like to walk around being a black man. I remember when I was when I was in high school, my brother and I would go... Uh, we'd go, go make out? No, we didn't make out. <laughs> we you went go, to the prom together. <laughs> we did not go to the prom together. But when we would go like clothes shopping for school... That same exact thing would be happening. We, we, we would just be constantly But surveilled. it happens fucking to me. I swear to God, if I walk into the store, they go, can I help you? Can I help you? And I don't think they mean that I'm trying to steal stuff. I think they mean I want to make the sale. I want to make the sale. And I find it annoying, Earl, like you do, because I like uh, a little bit less stress-free shopping. But I don't think that they think I'm trying to steal shit. And the thing that bothered me was, I'm like, it's like, I knew I was, I'm walking out with a purchase. I, I had every intention of buying. But something. did the guy say, "Can I help you?" Yeah, when I first walked in, I said, "No, thanks. I know exactly what I want. Thank you." And I, I said it twice. I said, "Thank you." And then I start to walk back to where the uh, the overcoats are, and then I just, for some reason, I just turned around and I, he's walking right behind me. And he, <laughs> and I, then I went, "Okay, now he thinks I'm gonna try to lift something," because I was. I wasn't, I mean, I had like jeans on or whatever it was, but I had like a, uh, like a, like a parka and my, not my usual overcoat. I had like, now this kind of looked a little runny cause I was, I was home all day and I just wanted to run out quick and grab something. But I, when, when that happened, I was like, okay, he honestly believes that I think I'm trying to lift something here. Uh, do you think, did the guy thought he was trying to steal? No, I think the guy was, you know, all these salespeople are being watched with cameras and everything, so they could get drilled into their heads, be friendly, and make sure you talk to the customers a lot. And that's what they do. That's all he was doing. Even sometimes, it's happened to me where the, the guy keeps saying, hey, can I help you with something? They, they, that's their job. Yeah, now. and I, I agree that I'd rather not do it, but it does happen to me. I don't think they think I'm trying to steal. I think they're trying to make, uh, you know, uh, purchases happen in the, uh, during their fucking that they get them before anyone else it's like when you walk on a car lot those motherfuckers will come at oh. you from every which way now Earl thinks they think I'm here to steal a car <laughs> right. yeah they're sharks uh, they're radio sharks <laughs> here is uh, Steve you're on running fuzz hey buddies Earl yeah. relax man the guy's just trying to make a little commission it happens to me all the time and I'm a white dude no big deal uh, Matt Matt you're on running fuzz yeah, uh, same thing as the last guy. I was in the mall this weekend. It's just an over-eager salesman. If he doesn't assist you and a cashier simply rings you up, nobody gets a commission. It's a house sale, so nobody will get commission. You just want to make some money off your Earl. But there were other people in the store, many of whom, I will admit, were white, and they were being completely left alone. Completely left yeah, alone. Yeah, but you didn't see them come in. They might have got the same routine when you get there. Now, if I owned a store... And I saw people coming in, let's say Fez and my and Dave were my salesmen. And they weren't trying to fucking make sales. I'd be like, what do you what am I paying you guys for? Fucking grab yeah. these people. And if the guy buy pants, get him a get a shirt with those pants. I'd be fucking working the rubes too. Yeah, but he addressed him, you know, he addressed it. He's like, Is there anything I can help you with? And I said, No, no, thank you. I know exactly what I want and and I, I mean I was gonna be in there maybe ten minutes. Yeah, I know, but you're telling the same story over and over, and you're not listening to what we're saying. The guy sees you, and he figures he's going to make his whatever his commission's going to be off that coat. You know? That's yeah. it. That's all he cares about is money. Jesse, you're on running Fez. Yeah, Earl, I got a question for you. You're bitching and complaining this guy was all over you when you're trying to browse the store and make a sale. But you'd be on the radio bitching and yelling if nobody came over to you to make a sale. What's the deal? Well, I knew what I wanted 
walking into the place. I mean, now it's a whole other story if I'm asking for help. And God but I'm saying it happens to me too. And I don't think I think it's more like they're just trying to fucking sell shit. Now, do you know what I'm? Do you ever hear those pings and get in the, like a big department store and get paranoid? <laughs> yeah, because black people are always paranoid. I would love to because I don't know. I never worked in a department store, but if anyone knows what those little pings, pings mean, <laughs> black people swear it means a black person is just walking through the air, which I'm sure they couldn't get away with. But I don't know what else it means. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez, eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Uh, here is uh, Clint. Clint, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, yeah, Ron, I was just wondering what your opinion was on uh, when people flirt to make a sale. Like, me and my buddy had a girl just up in our grill just about, you know, trying to sell a shit. Then my buddy's like, hey, is that a wedding ring? She's like, yeah. He's like, stop fucking flirting with her. Was your buddy a fucking gay guy? <laughs> Let no, him flirt a little no. bit. I always give the same line. You don't know who you're fucking with. Because <laughs> you will get fucking pounded. I had to tell a young lady that at the Christmas party the other night. I'll fucking come over here and rub it on my leg. <laughs> you're, you're in the deep end of the pool now. You're in the deep end of the pool. You better be able to swim, honey, because I don't fucking play the games. Ping! Earl's here. <laughs> I think that ping could be for everybody, but I'm not exactly sure about it. Uh, Sean, you're on a Fez. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I own a few cell phone stores, and uh, I can tell you this, and I'm not making a, a racist statement at all. Black people, generally speaking, are easier to sell. Now, why is that? I don't know. I just, uh, it, they're just easier to come out of pocket, you know, whether it be credit, whether it be money, and it's just the way it is. If I have, Earl, do you think that's uh, true or false? I don't think that's true at all. I think you have to work them a lot harder. No way. No way, Earl. Sorry, buddy. I know if there's something new, black people want it. I don't give a shit what the gadget Absolutely. is. Black people want it right away. Yeah. And they love shoes. I, first of all, is there any fucking use at all in the world for rims? <laughs> or for a giant uh, fucking diamond initial? You're never going to see you're never gonna see a CEO, no matter how much money he makes, with a giant R. It's my fucking name. Starts with R, everybody. It's fucking crazy. And, uh, um, anybody you see, uh, Mayor uh, Weather was on. See this ring, two hundred thousand dollars. This one, four hundred thousand. <laughs> You'll never see a white person outside of Elvis <laughs> holding up a ring for people to see. And I hate to say it, Earl, but he has as much in him as anybody else. You ought to check that fucking bloodline. <laughs> you can take full credit for Elvis. <laughs> uh, Mike, you're on a fez. Yeah, Ron. That's uh, the the pings that you're in the uh, department store. That's just a, a way for the store to keep from uh, irritating you with uh, who's uh, phone calls. Uh, those actually mean departments uh, and, and uh, employees. So uh, it does. Look, it, it does not mean there's a black in the area. <laughs> not at all. They, uh, employees, you, you, if you watch employees, they'll listen to that and they'll they'll know to pick up a phone or whatever. All right, uh, big ahead. ass prize closet for you, my friend. Uh, here is uh, Dave. Dave, you're on the first. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Every time I'm in a, a department store with my black friend. Whenever you hear, like, go over the loudspeaker, you hear security is check camera 12 and 4. He swears they're following him around. Every store we go in, he swears they're just... And Earl, you feel like you get followed, too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just completely... In, in that instance, I was just like, okay, maybe... I thought he was being cool, and then... When the second, but how about all the time? Not just the one situation you keep retelling this dull story <laughs> over and over, and nothing <laughs> happened, by the way. Like and he has repeated it. <laughs> Over and over. Like with Macy's? Always. And that, that's Earl, specifically. you're a suspicious looking character. You're dressed all... I'm forget about your skin color. You're dressed all in black. You wear black sunglasses and have a Bluetooth. You look weird. You look like Columbine. <laughs> <laughs> you do! You look like rerun Columbine if I had a nickname for you. <laughs> well, I mean, but I'm, I'm just... Uh, I'm like anyone else. I'm your average consumer. No, you're in camouflage I'm just time. your average Joe wearing a long black coat <laughs> that could be holding a machine gun underneath <laughs> of it. With sunglasses, indoors. I've seen him do that several times. You look like the Matrix. You look <laughs> like you should be part of the Matrix gang. Morpheus Douglas. <laughs> But he, I, when we went to Africa, I forget that fucking guy's name. <laughs> I am Morpheus. Why do you gotta fucking talk like this? Welcome to the art. <laughs> what are you doing talking that way? All those There's names. no fucking reason for it, Morpheus. <laughs> All those names actually mm. sucked when you think about it. Neo and Trinity. Neo meant one. <laughs> yeah. 
Whatever. But when we, Earl and I went into Abercrombie and Fitch, he had his sunglasses on, his Bluetooth in his ear. What were you guys doing in there? Talking. He wanted me, I, I've said this, he wanted me to, to see the, um, the cashiers. Male models? No, he's like, the girls are so hot in Abercrombie and Fitch. I'm like, Earl, I actually rent hardcore porn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to go to a department store. You rent it? You don't even buy it, you cheap fuck? <laughs> I rent it. Sure, I rent it. Why not? Yes, I'll have this porn back in two days. Hey, no, Thank you, sir. I keep it for a week or so, and then I give it back. What's wrong with that? You don't get bored that way. Uh, how can I help you with your porn, sir? What are you looking for today? <laughs> Leave me alone! Some ass-to-mouth action? <laughs> Uh, it's, yeah, he's just being paranoid, you yeah. know? Have you ever felt like you were being fought around a store before, Dave? No, honestly, Me I neither. haven't. I haven't felt like that. The only thing I see is that they're trying to make money. And I've shoplifted before, so... You should be followed. Yeah. yeah. No, I have felt like I was followed around a casino before, but I was fucking whacked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, kind of a different story, no? Like, like a casino, they're... They need to keep their well, eye Well, they're out watching people. everybody all the yeah. time. Right. So, And they're, they're going to keep their eye out for riffraffs. I'm going to tell you right now, if you start winning the casino, they're watching you. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a guy comes over. Yes, we'd like to give you a room. Why? We don't want you to leave with that money. <laughs> 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 and here's some drinks. Get fucked up and keep gambling. And by the way, why are three of you going into a stall together? <laughs> three grown men sharing a stall. And then going back to the sports book. Uh, here's uh, Matt. Matt, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, uh, Ronnie, I just had to call you. You said no CEO would ever wear a, a diamond initial. Um, Jay-Z is the CEO of Def Jam Records, and he wears uh, a diamond R, stands for Rockefeller. Just had to uh, call That's you. That's not even there, his name. No. But, it's an initial for the company that he used to CEO. Well, uh, do me a favor, Matt. Call me back with uh, Jay-Z fun facts whenever you fucking read Vibe magazine or whatever it is, all right? <laughs> and you fucking uh, call me. I will. Uh, here's Matt. Matt, you're on Well, what was, was the point of that guy's call? Oh. Uh, two quick points, guys. First off, my grocery runs a couple of stores, and the employees of these stores are told to greet people, one, because a lot of people take offense to not being greeted when they first walk in the store. And number two, for the people who do plan on shifting, uh, they're greeted promptly when they walk in, so uh, they kind of have it in the back of their mind that, that they're being watched. Yeah. Makes sense. Now, Patrice gave me, like, the uh, reverse uh, racism thing when I did the uh, mass with him because he was saying that he likes me because I don't go out of my way to talk to him. <laughs> I just him. Uh, hey, but he says because he's a large black guy, people are always like, hey, how are you? Great to see you. <laughs> and he knows that that's being done almost out of right. fear. Like, they're not greeting everyone that way. <laughs> yeah. But so they're all like, you look fantastic. <laughs> Now, do you ever get that, Earl? People acting too happy to see it? Um, I, I had that when I would like go to clubs or something like that, or places like that, uh, all the time. I would get just the nod. I would just be like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, hey, all right, how you doing? And I'll, and I'll be your friends. I'm like, who has that? I'm like, I have no idea. But people are just trying to say, I acknowledge you as being a black guy. I acknowledge you, you're black. I, I have to say, I'm guilty of this. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, four or five days ago, I was in the subway, yeah. and this like black guy was standing next to me. He might have probably, he was probably talking to himself, but uh, the subway was stalled, and he's like, shit, they never have the subway going on time. And I'm like, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know, it's always late. We're all in this together. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, it was so fucking apparent. No, no sense to start shooting each other. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the man sucks. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I know they're never on time. It was it was so it was so. Well, obvious. I uh, I tried to uh, I forget who a uh, a guest we had in here recently, but whenever he would mention like a black person, he would look over at <laughs> Lou Dobbs. Huh? Lou, Lou Dobbs. Dobbs. <laughs> yeah. So Lou Dobbs would be in here talking to me, and he'd be like, you know, like so many uh, great leaders. Martin Luther King, <laughs> and he would look over, and then he would go back to talking, and then he would go to Willie Mays, and, he would, and it was like, Earl was only interested in hearing black things, and Earl does perk up a little bit if he hears a black person mentioned. That part of it was true. I, you, did, you, I did that. 
Yeah. No, that, 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 Why? Yes. <laughs> yes, thanks for including me. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. Uh, Obama. Uh, <laughs> OJ. Did he actually do the point? Did he actually point at Earl? No, but he did. Oh. He did not his head over, made it very obvious that here's something that you may find interesting. <laughs> I know about some black. Uh, uh, he's like, uh, uh, and then there's also pig's feet, uh, crack cocaine, anything that could keep Earl's interest. So on a, on a given day, Earl, how much prejudice or racism do you think that you feel? On Any a given day. Uh, on a percentage, I would say 50%. Half the day, you feel like you're dealing with some amount of racism. Yes. Wow. wow. Well, that's that's staggering. But do you, I mean, I, it's, to me, it sometimes sounds like a little bit of paranoia. I mean, wh where's the proof in that? It's just, it's so implied. It's just implied. That's it. I mean, you just, like, you do you remember a book? I think you had to read it when you were a kid called Black Like Me. Yeah. Do you remember that book? I remember the book. Yeah. I, I forgot about it. I read it when I was like in seventh grade. But it was a white guy, and he actually, and this was during the 60s, I guess, when the book was written. So he had like a face tan put on and kinked his hair and went around to see how he was treated. And his he saw the world totally differently. Mm. I remember there was even a stupid fucking show last year that, that uh, a white family got black. Oh, and, yeah, uh, on Fox or something. Yeah, it was really terrible. Right. Um, but the the point is, you really don't know until you walk in mm -hmm. somebody else's uh, shoes. Now, the rest of us act like there's no such thing as prejudice. But you know when we were just saying the other night, Brooklyn, we were basically saying black neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. We're saying rough neighborhood. Right. But what we really meant to say was black neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mom always asks me, like, do you go out to any of the, you know, the supermarkets by, <laughs> by where, where you live? I'm like, no, it's a kind of a seedy neighborhood. <laughs> now, what do you guys do? Just order out? We get uh, Fresh Direct. It's, oh. it's a website. Your neighborhood is so rough that you're afraid to get fucking food? <laughs> yeah. Do you go to any restaurants in your neighborhood? Uh, I go to some of the restaurants in the good parts of, yeah, where, where I live. But, like, I, there there are department stores, like Targets and stuff, and unless we're really desperate for something, I try to avoid those altogether. Because... And your chick doesn't go out on her own, right? No, usually not. Then you got to get her out of that neighborhood, brother. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you know, here's the deal. Well, she, she doesn't go out at night. In the daytime, she feels okay to, to go out. But at, at nighttime, there, she has been, you know, sometimes they've been like, Hey, look at this white woman <laughs> walking around. It's true, <laughs> Earl. Don't look. I mean, they, she's had like a Wait, few Earl, moments. you think it's not true? I don't think it's not. It's not that you don't know, have guys standing at the corner drinking wine, leering at your wife. It's our that first. doesn't happen. That doesn't happen in the fucking Dude, city. Earl, I was... Black <sighs> people don't fucking yell yeah. out shit at people. Oh, they did, Earl! Because I have to walk her dog at night, right? So I'm walking the dog. It's this little Pomeranian, you know. So let's face it. It does kind of look like a chick dog, you know. It's it's a feminine dog to have. And I'm walking the dog, and I pass by a bodega, and these three guys were, were standing on the corner, and they're like, Dude, and they're like, that dog is so fucking gay. <laughs> and they basically called me, you know, whatever, so what pussy, is because I had to walk What'd the dog. What did you say back? Get me across the street. <laughs> I went on my merry way. I didn't say anything. I had my iPod on the time. And I was pretending Dude, like take my free coat. <laughs> like all right, we got a break here. We haven't broke yet. We'll be right back. Run fest. Ron Denny.